back to CR Investors ongoing series, Learning Technical Analysis. Uh, today's episode is all about MACD, the MACD tutorial, understanding and using the MACD indicator. This is uh, part two of our momentum uh, series, and uh, the MACD is my raw reading for momentum. Uh, I would encourage you while you're watching this video to pop on over to the Google Docs uh, website and pull down this slideshow presentation. You can get it from either the website, uh, a link off of my site, um, and uh, follow along uh, as I explain all this information. Uh, as well, you can go to my website, therationalinvestor.ca, and follow the links to uh, get that information there as well. Now, this video is about 10 minutes long, so I'm going to move fairly briskly through the information. Uh, I'd encourage you to uh, pop into one of my tutorial sessions if you have further questions about how to use the MACD uh, and how I use it specifically um, at your leisure. So uh, let's uh, keep this train moving along and uh, we'll get on to the next slide. So basically we're going to be covering today a few topics. Uh, first off, we're going to define what the MACD indicator is. Uh, a lot of people uh, are not familiar with what these letters actually mean. Um, we're going to be looking at three components of the indicator, uh, specifically um, moving average differences, uh, moving average of the difference, and a histogram, which is a visual presentation of that moving average difference. Uh, we're going to then move on to the concept of divergence, which is really the key takeaway from this indicator. And lastly, we're going to look at how I specifically use a MACD in conjunction with uh, the Williams percentage R overbought, oversold reading uh, to uh, get a full picture of what uh, an issue's momentum looks like. Uh, so specifically, what is the MACD indicator? Uh, MACD stands for Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. Um, it is a trend-following momentum indicator uh, that shows the relationship between two moving averages of an underlying asset's price. The MACD itself is calculated historically sort of like the out-of-the-box indicator. Uh, is calculated by subtracting the 26-day exponential moving average, EMA, you'll see that term a lot, uh, from the 12-day EMA. A 9-day EMA of the MACD, called the signal line, is then plotted on top of the MACD, functioning as a trigger for buy and sell signals. Wow, that's awfully wordy, but uh, basically that summarizes uh, what the MACD indicator is. And uh, at any point, if you would like to go online, you can, uh, all of the um, textbook definitions that I use, um, I have references for, so you're more than welcome to uh, look into that further. But basically, this is the MACD in a nutshell. So, what does a MACD look like? Um, I personally like to use this website called TradingView.com, and if uh, you have the opportunity, I encourage you to pop over there. Um, and as you can see, I've just uh, plotted uh, the S&P 500 index ETF, that's the SPY, um, and I've just simply gone into the indicator list, and I've added the MACD indicator. And you'll see in the brackets here, this is a 12 period with a 26 period moving averages and uh, the nine period signal line. So when you uh, add this indicator to your chart, this is basically what pops up here, uh, where the blue line is our MACD, that's the difference between the two uh, moving averages, um, and the red line is our signal line. So that's point one, MACD line is blue line, point two, the nine EMA of the MACD is our red line. Uh, the last key uh, component of this indicator, as we said, is the histogram, and that's basically just a nice simple visual representation of uh, the relationship between these two lines. So you'll notice that when the um, uh, blue line is below the red line, this is going to give you a negative reading, and conversely, when the blue line is above the red line, it's going to give you a positive reading. 
um, as we'll soon see, the relationship between these two lines is very important to technicians as it basically gives you a nice, simple, raw reading uh, of momentum in the market. So moving right along here, um, we're now going to take a look at the concept of divergences. And that's really the key takeaway from the MACD indicator. And it's really how this indicator is very powerful. Um, so the chart on the left um, is an example of a bullish momentum divergence. And what we say and the chart on the right is an example of a bearish momentum divergence. So very simply put, the market is said to be in divergence when an underlying asset's price is moving in one direction. So, you know, in the bullish scenario, we have price uh, itself is actually making lower highs and lower lows. But the indicator itself is moving in another. Um, and as we said, here's a bullish momentum uh, divergence. We have price making lower highs and lower lows. And yet the indicator itself is making higher lows and higher highs. So as you can see by this dotted line, uh, price is trending lower. And yet the indicator itself is trending higher. Um, you know, the chart on the uh, right is uh, an example of the bearish momentum divergence where, again, uh, price is making higher highs and higher lows, and yet the internal momentum reading of the market, uh, the indicator itself is making lower highs and lower lows. Uh, this condition can often lead to dramatic moves by price itself to get back into sync with its sort of internals. Um, and, you know, again, bullish momentum divergence, there's the setup, the resolution, price had to appreciate dramatically. Bearish momentum divergence, the way uh, price basically had to come down to get back into sync with the internal momentum. So if we put it all together, how do uh, I, uh, the CR investor, uh, use this? Um, well, simply put, uh, historically, um, extreme readings are the only way MACD really gives you uh, overbought and oversold signals. Well, we run into a problem within divergent markets, and keep in mind, it's that divergent signal that's of real value from the MACD indicator. So. The solution is, is we're going to simply add a nice oscillator, in this case a Williams percentage R, to our analysis. Now, if we add this simple oscillator that tells us overbought and oversold conditions, if we get a divergence that sets up when the oscillator is in the overbought zone, put it together, we get a very powerful signal. And as you recall, this is the same chart from the previous slide, um, where there is that bearish divergence. And the fact that the, uh, the overbought, oversold oscillator is sitting quite heavily embedded in the overbought condition uh, lends a lot of support to the notion that price needed to come back down um, when this bearish momentum divergence presented itself. Um, you know, last point that I would make with this tutorial is that if you looked at price analysis alone, you would have never uh, seen uh, this setup coming. The fact that the momentum inside the internal structure of the market was very weak at this point um, supported the idea that price needed to come back down. So very simply put, when used in conjunction with overbought and oversold indicators, the MACD is a very, very powerful trading rule tool. So that basically brings us to the end of this tutorial. Uh, we've basically talked a bit about uh, what the MACD indicator it is, um, the definition of, of uh, what these letters stand for. Um, we understand what the uh, sort of structure of the MACD indicator looks like um, and how we use the indicator to really uh, leverage uh, signals. Um, again, you're more than welcome to pop over to my website. Uh, you can get this document and keep it for yourself. Um, if you uh, come into one of my tutorial sessions, I'd be more than happy to talk to you in person.
person about how that indicator works and how we can use it. Uh, as well, feel free to follow me on C uh, and Twitter at CR Investor. Thank you very much, and have yourselves a great trading day.